painters, it's a cold, rainy and miserable day outside, Sunday, and uh, it's a perfect day to do some painting. So I'm going to get back into Hellboy and start doing all of these uh, character figures. So come along with me and let's get it done. Right, I'm all settled in my painting workstation area. I've got my figures, I've got my paints, I've got my wet palette. And also I've got um, an audible book, which I'll be playing in the background. I'm going through the Patrick O'Brien books at the moment, which I've read a couple of times before, but I really enjoy listening to. Um, so it's good to have something playing in the background just to keep your brain occupied while you're painting. Um, my object here is to paint all of the base colors of that batch of figures I just showed you. And uh, once all the base colors are done, I'll go back and start doing washes and highlights. But it's satisfying to get all the base colors down and then you feel like you've really achieved something. And then you can go back and detail them uh, to whatever level you feel comfortable with. So it's just slapping down colors first. And of course I've got no actual online reference for these, just um, the original comics. And um, that's about it really. Uh, I usually like to use other paint jobs online as a reference for my figures because coming up with color schemes is a bit of, bit of a drag. Um, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. I know this one, for example, even though he's a demon figure, is sort of a brownie looking demon, so I'll pick an appropriate colour for him. So let's get started. So I've decided to use snake bite leather for this character. So uh, let's start filling in the colour, and it's really easy because this whole figure is pretty much uh, brown with a metal sword, so super easy. Remember to mix a little bit of water with your paint as usual. Just to thin it down a little bit, and so it flows nicely over the miniature. Right, let's get painting. <laughs> that was easy. I'll let that dry. Now on to the next one. Uh, this one I'm going to do his head with uh, camo green, so he's sort of got a glowy greeny head. And then the rest of the uh, spider thing he's in is um, just a metal colour. Mixing a bit of white with that green just to lighten it up a little bit. Don't forget to roughly clean your brushes between dipping them into paint pots. Pots. I have a terrible habit of dipping coloured brushes into my white pot, which uh, I really shouldn't do. Now I'll put that metal colour on, lead belcher in this case. And that is just going on over all the metallic areas, which is pretty much the rest of the figure, except for the parchment he's holding. So I'm going to get started on Hecate here, and I'm going to do a little bit of a blend between two um, greeny colours, Sybarite Green and Cabalite Green. And this is where uh, I can do a little bit of wet blending. So I put both colours on my palette, and as I paint them onto the figure, I can blend them together so I get a bit of transition of colour and something a bit more interesting than just a flat colour. So here I'm putting on the lighter colour, And then I'll get some of the darker colour down the bottom here and paint in the areas that'll be a bit more in shadow. This gives me a bit of variation. As you can see, my paint is pretty uh, liquid at this stage, so those two colours blend together. And using my wet brush, I can blend them together on the figure. This is a technique I use a lot when I'm painting larger figures, so I can get colour variation happening nice and easily and, and easy blends. For the other Hecate figure, um, I'm starting off with a bit of um, metallic paint around the uh, top of the figure because this particular Hecate, uh, according to the comics, uh, was transformed from an Iron Maiden, so she's part metal. And then in the bottom half of the figure, I'll blend that down into the same green colour I used for the other version. And you can see how easy it is to blend those two totally different colours together when they're wet on the figure.
Next up is this guy. I've already done the flesh and actually washed it as well. But now I'm going to pick some colours just for his pants and boots. For all the uh, BPRD figures, I'm going Death Guard Green for their khaki uh, outfits uh, with a black vest. This guy is mostly metallic uh, with some black accents and of course a coloured face. A lot of these Nazis of course are pretty much black. Uh, the professor, of course, is in various shades of brown. Right, this version of Hellboy, same colours as the other Hellboy, black pants, Mephiston red for the skin, uh, Rhinox hide for the pouches and uh, boots. This is uh, Rasputin and I'm using black with a bit of regal blue mixed in to give a nice blue black cloak. Pancakes Hellboy, the young Hellboy, a shabty bone for his shirt. Steel Legion Drab for the pants. Remember, pick any colours you like. Uh, be creative, you don't have to follow these colours, you can do whatever you want. Right, all those base coats are done. You can see it's very simple. So let's just go through them. There's my demon. I've forgotten all the names of these characters, but you can see this one's mostly black. Outfits, Nazis really do like their black. All the BPRD uh, characters are roughly the same, khaki and black and brown outfit. Um, I was using Rhinox hide for the um, leather gloves and pouches before, but I realized on the earlier figures I'd use Steel Legion Drab, so I repainted those Steel Legion Drab. It's a lighter brown. Here's another one. These are just extra agents. There's one with the jetpack. I'll do all the cloud later because I want to give this guy a wash first. And there's another one. Then we've got uh, the professor. 
just a selection of browns, very easy. Uh, this guy I forgot the name of. This guy with the chain fist pan thing, flail, whatever. Uh, the head in a jar guy. Unfortunately, he doesn't come with a translucent jar over his head, but there is a thread on Board Game Geek where people come up for solutions to that. Um, this guy again. Very simple. Enraged Hellboy. Same paint job as the other Hellboy. Another Nazi, pretty much all in black. This is the uh, Pancakes Hellboy. And a couple of these other guys as well. Just brown. And metal. And of course we've got Hecate. This version, and this is the version where she's transforming from an Iron Maiden. So hence the metal. And as you saw, I did that wet blend. So that's all the basic colours. I'm just going to let these dry for a bit longer and then start putting on washes and we're well on the way to finishing this batch. In the meantime, I think I'll start putting down the base colours on these busts. Now I'm sure I mentioned many times that um, I don't bother too much with removing mould lines and things these days, um, only if I'm really doing a, a special job on a figure. But after I've primed them in white like this, uh, some of them really jump out and you can see these lines on Hellboy here. So waiting until after the primer is, is put on gives me a good idea of which ones would bother me in the future. So I can just file these off now and easily paint over these bits. And this way I just get rid of the most obvious mould lines and don't worry about ones that I can't really see. So of course I've already done the main figures for all of these busts, so I'll just be following the same paint schemes that I used for the main figures. And they're all pretty simple, I've just the same colours that I've been using throughout this video. Um, mainly khaki and black and uh, a very blue-black on Lobster Johnson there. Um, green on Abe, very simple colours, um, but these busts should be quite nice to paint. They're really nicely defined and, of course, larger in scale. So there's something a little bit different in the painting of these figures. I won't go through all of them, but I will show you Hellboy. So starting with a darker red, corn red, and later on I can highlight that up using Mephiston red and then Blazing Orange. But base coat is this darker red. When you're painting figures in general, it's always a good idea to go up from painting the skin uh, and then going up through the layers of clothing. So start with the skin and then a shirt and then an overcoat and things like that. And that way you can go into um, the harder to get to areas first. And then as you're painting on top of that, you can clean up any areas. So when you put down the flesh colours, you can be really rough because you'll be cleaning up when you paint other colours uh, on top of that. So better to do thin coats and then have to do another coat on top than to do a coat which is too thick. And also it's just easier to get the paint into nooks and crannies if it's flowing a little bit. Now his hair is black so I don't have to worry about um, painting neatly around the face because I'll be painting black on top of the red. And it's just little things like this that make painting in general a lot faster. Just don't be too neat until you have to be. Okay, I'll let that dry and then paint the overcoat and the uh, black hair. Oh, by the way, for uh, Krauss's head here, um, that's a rust grey with a little bit of white mixed in to get a sort of light, slightly bluey grey. Alright, now I'll paint his cloak in Death Guard Green. This happens to be a thinner paint, so I'll need a couple of coats on this to get a nice smooth coat without any brush strokes.
Now that I've done all the base coats and all these figures, it's time to do the washing. It's a very easy phase and it gets great results. And I'm using the old classics, Sarah from Sepia, uh, Null Oil. I use the gloss versions of these because they uh, go into the recesses just a little bit better. They leave a gloss finish, but that doesn't matter because you'll be uh, spraying the whole thing with the varnish when it's done. Agrax Earthshade, of course, um, and then for the occasional different colour, like uh, uh, Hecate here, we'll be using a bit of Coella Green Shade, and um, I think that's about it, actually. That's really all the sort of colours that you need. Um, it's mainly, mainly browns, because what you're doing, of course, is just getting a bit of darkness into the recesses and giving that 3D feel to the figure. And then after that, I'll be uh, getting to the highlight stage, but certainly washing all these and letting them dry will take a while. Just choose the most appropriate wash for the job. Um, on the flesh here, of course, I use Serif from Sepia. It's a good shade for flesh. But on the uh, green and the brown, I'm using Agrax Earth Shade because that has a, a deeper brown color and is more appropriate for the green and brown. There you go, super easy and looks better already. And of course, as usual, just remove any wash that pulls in the recesses too much by using a brush where you've wiped off the excess. There you go. Another good tip, um, sometimes these paint pots don't stay open. You can stick a brush in the back like that and it keeps the lid open. Here's a perfect example of how great washes are. Um, you can see this demon figure, which I just painted in a light brown before, and I've given that a wash over of Agrax Earthshade, and it's just gone beautifully into all the recesses there. Looks great already. Here are my figures all base coated and washed. So I'll let these dry. And at this stage, uh, once the washes are dry, I like to paint the bases just because uh, it looks good and it looks like they're almost finished. And I can actually um, use them on the tabletop at this stage with, with finished bases. Um, and always go back and do the highlights later. That's just the order I like to do things. But you can see this didn't take too long. It was just slapping down base coats and slapping down a wash. After that, you can get quite a large batch of figures done pretty quickly. Of course, how much time you want to spend on the highlight stage is up to you, and we'll get onto that next. As you can see, the great thing about doing things in this order is that these figures are ready to put on the table and play with. Now, even though I do want to do another round of detail on these, they still look pretty good just with base colors and wash. And with the bases done, they look good enough uh, to use. So it's a good way of getting them onto the table fast. Okay, let's get on to some highlighting. Now, I haven't talked about highlighting for a while because I've been concentrating on these fast techniques to get your figures uh, on the tabletop as fast as possible. And you can see with a figure like this, if I finish the, uh, the steam and exhaust here, it'd look fine and be good enough to play with. But of course, most of the time we want to take it to the next level and add a bit of highlighting because it makes the uh, figure jump off the table a bit, it gives it more sense of scale and uh, it obviously just looks a lot better. So how do you highlight? And this is probably the most challenging thing for uh, new painters because um, new painters often think that you have to blend the highlights together perfectly so there's a perfect transition from uh, light to dark. Now, of course, if you're doing a beautiful um, figure that you want to enter into a golden demon competition or something like that that's exactly what you do but for a play piece you really don't have to go to that uh, that amount of trouble and usually uh, one or at the most two levels of highlight are enough so uh, what do i mean by levels of highlight well that means one level is to for example take this green which is our base coat which we've washed i'd go a lighter khaki green from this and highlight the areas which would be uh, hit by light if it was coming down from above. My second level of highlight would be just a, a lighter color again but to just do it in a very small way on the very tips of highlights. 
And when I talk about tips of highlights, I'm talking about things like the knees and the tips of the fingers and the end of the nose and stuff like that. So um, this is where a wet palette comes in handy because you can see I've used it painting those base, base colours. I've still got all these colours on here and some of them are still wet and I can use those as a basis for my highlight colours. So how do you choose your highlight colours? Well, again that's just part of the creative process. Um, you really, 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 and I can't emphasise this enough, you really don't have to buy special highlight colours from Games Workshop and you don't have to stick to their colour system that says this highlight goes with this shade and all that kind of stuff. That's just a system they've come up with to sell lots of paints. It's great for beginners if you want to do that, but you really don't have to go to that trouble. Most highlight colours come from just having the base colour and adding a bit of white to it, or depending on the colour, you might add a little bit of yellow to it, or you might add an off-white, like a sharp deep bone, something like that. So it's really just a lighter version, and this is where colour theory comes in really handy, and I'll do a separate video on colour theory one day. But there's very little to remember, really just things like greens, if you want a, a really nice uh, yellowy green, obviously you add yellow. If you want a more olive green, you add white. So I'll show you that right now, and I've showed you this in a very old video, but it's time to do it again, I think. So if I have green here, actually we'll use the colour that we've got here, so this base colour was Death Guard Green. Now remember I've shaded this, so it's got a little bit darker, and it's certainly darker in the recesses. So, let's get a bit of that. I'm running out of space on my palette here, but let's stick it there. There we go. Now, if I want to highlight this with yellow, let's add a bit of yellow, you can see I get, obviously, a much more yellowy, brighter green. Now, if I want to do that with white, let's just wash my brush, get some ceramite white, and hot, mix it there. Right, you can see the very big differences between the lighter colours. That keeps it sort of olive um, tone because it's uh, mixed with white. This goes obviously a lot yellow yellower. Um, I probably wouldn't add that much yellow, I add, added too much yellow there. But big difference in the highlight colours. They're both lighter versions of uh, my olive green, but by adding different highlights uh, it changes quite a lot. Now, whoops, if I get some more Death Guard green, oh, Clean the brush. Stick it over here. And now I add the sharp deep bone, which is a nice colour to add sometimes for highlights. And add that. You can see I get a more grey kind of highlight. It's not quite as intense as the as the white. It's more sort of parchmenty browny uh, highlight. So depending which highlight colour I use, obviously I'm going to get different effects. So I'm just going to stick with the nice and simple and I've got the one that I added white to. Now you're probably thinking, well how light do I go? Well that's, as I said, is just something that comes through experience. But really, it's better to have a little bit more contrast than too little. Um, when you're looking at a figure very, very closely, uh, especially if you're using some kind of magnifier, you'll be able to see uh, the differences between these highlights very well, but remember, as always, this is being put on a table which is probably about you know, half a metre away from your eyes. So you want relatively high contrast. So, let's just move that out of the way. There we go. So I've got that uh, lighter colour on there and then I just proceed to paint it on the bits that are going to be hit by a light, an imaginary light that's coming from up above. So, I do it on the upper lines of folds, like so, and you want to use a smaller brush than um, the one you use for your base colours for this because it's a little bit finer work. And just pop it on there. Knees are always good for some reason, I don't know why, but it just makes things look better if the knees are highlighted a bit. A little bit there. Now this is where you're using slightly more painterly strokes, so just use the brush to get a sort of bit of flair in your brush stroke and there we go very easy to do now that's quite a contrasting highlight there so I really don't need to put another level on there because lighter than that would pretty much be white so that really is enough now if I go around and do the 
sleeves again just on those folds and I'm imagining that that highlight is coming from up above so obviously it's going to hit the top of the uh, top of the sleeves here there this brush is losing its point a bit unfortunately but there we go to the top there as you can see it's just a few little painterly strokes and it just gives the figure a bit of three dimensions and really there's not too much to highlight just the top of those fold lines it doesn't have to be exact but it just gives it a bit of dimension now here's a, a non-intuitive kind of thing is sometimes putting a little highlight underneath objects see how I've just put a little highlight underneath the pouch there for some reason it just makes it lift a little bit I know that wouldn't be a spot normally hit by light but it's uh, something you can try yourself and it often works quite well top of the pocket also you want to do a highlight around the tops of boots stuff like that so there's my olive color done now he's got a black vest here so uh, I'm gonna get some black and here it is I've just got a brand new pot of bad and black I ran out last night and luckily I'd ordered some Here's another suggestion, when you're painting, as soon as you start running out of a colour, order some straight away because by the time it gets to you, you'll desperately need it. So as soon as you get it get low and you think you're going to run out, uh, order some more. So I mixed a tiny bit of white in with my black, so I've got a grey colour. And again, I'll just do a little highlight around the top of the collar. Again, just imagining that light hitting from the top. I can dry that brush off and sort of dry brush the top of his hair a little bit. That's easy. And there's really so much detail in here, you just want to put some tiny little highlights in. And on something like this, I think I'd go, because it's supposed to be a sort of leather jacket, I'll do another level a bit more white into my black so it's quite white and then just do a few little spots of highlight now that's because when something is glossy uh, the light hits it in a more specular fashion and this is a word I got from when I used to do 3D work the specular highlight is the size and shape of a highlight and if you highlight something that's glossy the highlights tend to be small and bright and sharp if you highlight something that's matte, of course they're diffused and larger. So you can use that information to give an indication of what kind of material the object is. But don't worry about it too much on these kind of figures. Now I'm going to use a little bit of brown to paint in these straps. And then mix a little bit of white with that brown. Usually I'd use a uh, shabti bone to mix with brown for highlighting brown, but I'll just use white in this case. And just do a little bit of an edge highlight. There we go. So that's looking all right. Um, a little bit more white in the black and we'll just do around the tops of the boots. This just defines the, uh, the difference between the pant and the boot and a little bit of highlight on the end of the boot, a few little wrinkle lines there. Again I'm doing quite um, bright highlights on the boot because they're going to be glossy boots, relatively glossy boots. There we go. A little bit on his eye patch. Now these, uh, I think these are grenade casings or something, so I'm just going to give those a little rough bit of metal. And then finally what I've got left are the brown gloves and the brown belt. So again, a bit of white with the brown 
and a bit of highlighting. Now, oops, a bit more, I think. In fact, I'll use a Shabti Brown, I think. So you're just making decisions as you go. There's no hard and fast rules you have to use. So when you're doing hands, I need a lighter colour. When you're doing hands, just the tips of the fingers, a tiny little dot on the tips of the fingers, and then usually, if you can see them, a little bit on the knuckles as well, because the knuckles stand, tend to stand out. A little highlight on the knuckles. A bit hard to see with this figure. Usually I'd paint this with my head loop um, so I could get a lot, of it, a lot closer, but I've got the camera in front of me. So, these are using this brown. And a little bit of that to highlight. Don't forget to mix water in as usual. Just a little bit to make it flow. And then really you can just dab the top of these things. If you've got a nice fine brush, just delineate the uh, fingers. And then again, just any folds where there'd be a highlight. And there we go. Again, just, you can sometimes use the highlight just to separate shapes. So there and there. There we go. Very, very simple and it's quite subtle, but it's just made the figure a little bit more interesting, given it more dimensions. Now, of course, the face. You're always going to be doing the face. So usually I've used something like Kislev Flesh and given it a, a Seraphim Sepia Wash. So I'll just go back to Kislev Flesh. Because it's been darkened by the wash, I can use straight Kislev Flesh. And this is where you just want to do the nose, maybe a line across the forehead, the chin, and a little bit under the eyes, just where the cheekbones are, and of course the tips of the ears. And these are just little highlight areas, like that. And then you might just get a little bit of white, just to do the tip of the nose. That gives you just enough definition to the face. And there he is. I'll just do this uh, exhaust next and that figure will be pretty much finished. A little bit of uh, flesh just on the arms as well. And again, just a little, just a little stroke, a little painterly stroke. It doesn't have to blend into the colour. It is a highlight. There we go. So it's not going to win any awards and I'm not blending the colours together perfectly but as I said from a distance it's going to look great and it'll stand out more on the tabletop if it's got a bit of highlighting. Now I'm just going to show you how I painted on the uh, highlights on this Hellboy figure. Um, I'm just going up through shades of orange and then adding a little bit more yellow to get my highlights. Your other alternative with highlighting the red is to add white or a light flesh colour and go that way and with those two different types of highlights you'll get a different effect you'll either get a warmer orangey glow to the skin tones or uh, you'll get a whiter tone to the skin tone so um, pick either one and uh, go that way I think actually I painted my first Hellboy with a bit more white and I painted this one with a bit more orange so I tried both um, but whatever you prefer uh, you can watch the rest of me painting the highlights here. It's a bit interesting because you can see how I'm sort of using painterly strokes to uh, do the muscles on the figure. But if you don't want to watch that, just skip to the end of the video and we'll wrap this session up.
So the next job is to go through that batch of figures that I've base coated and washed and do these little highlights and uh, that'll pretty much finish them off. And then, what do we get to next? It's the monsters. Yes, the large figures. Now a lot of people are daunted by painting large figures, but don't be. They're even easier than painting small figures, I find. And I'll show you how next time. That's the Order of Gamers. Esoteric Order of Gamers. Orderofgamers.com Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.